Hello, it's Beck here from Hello My Name is Beck, and welcome to a long awaited tutorial. This is a tutorial for a uh, zip pocket on a flip book. Uh, so, we are starting by measuring out some paper. So, we want a base paper for our flip book or booklet, not sure what you would call it. And so, that is our paper just there. I am going Easter themed. And so throughout this, I will write down the sizes of the paper. So we've got 12 inches by 8 inches, the 12 across the top, obviously, so that we can fold it in half for it to become a booklet. Now you see me touch the 6 there, but then what I do is I go either side of the 6. So we are going at 5 and 7 eighths and 6 and 1 eighth, um, so that we have a spine to our booklet and it means that it's nice and centered being that the paper is 12 inches and then I'm just going to round off the corners just here and then we move on to the next piece of paper um, that we are going to be making pockets for the inside with now I have skipped ahead with um, cutting these pockets uh, because Everyone does their own pockets their own way. Um, the one thing that I would say, if you do want to actually stitch all the way around the actual uh, flip book stroke booklet, um, you do want to arrange your pockets so that they are flat, not gusseted, unless you want to actually stitch each one individually so that it looks like it's been stitched all the way around. So I'm just sticking the left hand side here of each of these pockets because I'm actually going to be sewing along the outside so I don't want to have my sewing needle uh, pick up the glue of the double sided tape so you can see there that it's loose so next piece of paper we're bringing in is going to be the pocket for the front the pocket that has the zip attached so we are cutting this down so it's going to be 5 inches by 8 inches and the reason for this is we are actually going to be adding a, a gusset to the pocket so that the zip actually stands all the way out you see there that I stopped on the 7 but then I realised I needed the gusset on both sides of this pocket so it's 5 by 8 inches then we're going to get our scoreboard out and we are then going to create the gusset so the gusset's going to go on three sides and the one that I was tapping on is the side that I'm going to have my zip so I am turning that around to make the gusset so I'm scoring at half an inch one inch and three quarters of an inch and I'm doing that on all three sides the reason I've done a half inch border is because I've measured my double sided tape so it it turns out that this pocket is then six inches by four inches which is the perfect size for the front of our booklet the front of our booklet um, is roughly about six inches by eight inches so um, by having the pocket six by four it just fits perfectly on the front of the booklet so I'm folding my gussets here uh, and I have also chopped out the corners that I needed to have chopped out and so like I said the reason I have that half an inch um, on the outside is because that I, I know will then fit a really really good double sided tape so say for example you have a nice red line tape that is less than half an inch um, you would be able to make that part of your your gusset um, smaller but for me it works better to have the quarter of an inch on the edge there so that or half an inch sorry on the edge there so that um, my double sided tape really really holds the pocket down so you can see here I have folded all of the edges and there is one edge free because that's where our zip is going to go. So I'm just taking off some of the corners here um, just so that when I put the pocket or the zip in it then can fold into um, the actual pocket, the, 
the leftover parts of the zip you see those little tiny flaps at the top they then will tuck it into the actual pocket when it is sewn so the next step for me is to use a washi tape um, and it and i recommend a washi tape not a, a sticky tape um, so that you're not ripping your um, your paper so I use a washi tape to uh, secure my zip in place while I'm stitching. Uh, one of the things which is good about a washi tape is it doesn't make your needle sticky when you're sewing through it. And it also is um, very easy to sew through. So moving my scoreboard out of the way. And then I think it's now that I grab my um, washi tape and it's just a... Um, one of those washi tapes that you don't really care about. <clears throat> and so I use this to then secure the zip where I need it on the inside. So I'm just sticking it to the zip there for the minute. Then I am placing the zip where I want it and then sticking along the edge. So the zip is going right on the edge of the paper if you see like it's not going under the paper um, because that's then harder to stitch. So here is me with my my washing machine. Gosh, my sewing machine. Gosh, seriously. Okay, so um, I have now cut another strip and this strip was one inch by seven and a half inches. Um, this strip is going to be the, it's almost like a belly band that goes around the outside to seal it together. Um, but yes, I am sewing around the outside of this. I forgot to do that before um, bringing in the sewing machine, but then I remembered that that's how I wanted to seal up the uh, flip book. So as you can see, I am just sewing around the edge of the uh, belly band or, or closure and just running that through and turning it around. So it's not perfect, um, never will be because um, there is a round curve at the end and a sewing machine likes to go in a straight line. <laughs> um, and then now I am running around the back of the book. Um, so you see that washi tape there, that's just giving me an indication of where I will be putting my closure or, or putting my closure on. I decided not to sew it onto the book, I will just use double sided tape. Um, so just going around the corner very slowly and then getting on that straight and then you head down quickly doing a nice one-handed manoeuvre there um, so my right hand will always be controlling my uh, sewing machine um, so you can see my right hand's just resting there and it's pressing the buttons on my sewing machine because my sewing machine is not pedal operated it is literally just hand operated up on the actual sewing machine which is great because I am somebody who likes to craft with my legs crossed so I'll just be running that through with the left hand and then pressing um, stopping and starting with my with my right hand and using my right hand to then um, lift the pedal foot every time it's going around the corner so hopefully you guys can do the same with your sewing machine. Um, you might have a different sewing machine to mine, um, but yeah, it's pretty cool. So the reason I chose to go around the outside of the book was because the thread actually looks better on the outside of the book. So now is time for me to sew the zip in. Um, so just going on the outside of the paper here, so it once again looks better. I'm just putting my presser foot up to the edge of the zip as far as I can go and very slowly going along um, so this is just an intricate part you just want to go very slowly and so I'm stopping here lifting my presser foot and then pushing the zip all the way up so using my scissors there to push the zip all the way up because it was open enough for me to run along the zip uh, to begin with so very slowly finishing that off, making sure that the zip stays in place with my other hand there. And then what I do is I then um, go around the other edges, but because I have had to go from edge to edge 
because of the zip being um, sewn in I'm then going to do edge to edge on this side and then I'm going to crisscross my stitching with the other two um, two edges so you'll see what I mean is it will just create more of a, a crisscross rather than um, going round in a square I think it looks really nice at the end now you'll see this is the way that I finish off. I don't back stitch because I think back stitching actually um, ruins the look of the project um, because you'll see the back stitching on the front. So I will always finish off by pulling my threads through and then tying them off on the other side. So using my sewing machine just to go down. Um, now I realised that the zip's going to be in the way on this one so it's going to end up wonky so I just quickly stop and pull the zip out of the way. And so this is what I mean here by the crisscross and doing the other side. Now I think this is where the thread actually uh, gets sucked into the machine um, and it does a couple of stitches when the thread actually is not in the uh, needle. So I just quickly re-thread that. And you'll see that there's a couple of holes there that have been created so it's just a case of putting your needle back into that first hole and then running the stitch along the, the holes that you've already created so hopefully it then looks like nobody would notice that you've just gone a couple of stitches without um, any thread so that's uh, those two there um, I haven't sewn on the gusseting I've just sewn on the front of the pocket and this is what it's going to look like uh, position wise on the front um, and then what I do is I use some more washi tape you can see here that I've ripped off the washi tape on around the thread there is still some there from prior so then I use my washi tape here and I do two two layers layers of washi tape just so that it stays secure on the other side of the booklet so just lining that up and pressing down once I'm happy with the position so pressing that washi tape down so then when I lift it up and flip it over ta-da the washi tape is um, in the right position so then coming in with my sewing machine again unzipping that zip so that my sewing machine can run along the edge of the uh, zip in the same way it did on the other side and then just running it down and stopping again where the um, before I get to the zip because otherwise you'll go seriously wonky now what I had to do on this one because it wouldn't go past the, the foot is I had to then turn the booklet so that I could see and then pull it up so then just sliding that zip back underneath the washi tape that had lifted and then running it all the way down to the bottom so this is where I can actually uh, reverse stitch because it won't be seen um, it won't be seen by the people on underneath the, the zip and so then you can see that I am just removing the washi tape here so just ripping the side of the washi tape up one side and then it means that I can then um, I'm just going to finish off this one up here because I forgot to reverse stitch up at the top so just tying that off and then removing some more of the washi tape so pulling both threads through this is the way to finish it off and then you just tie it off in a knot um, I tend to do three knots and then snip so and then the rest of the washi tape can come off it doesn't matter if it stays on because really seriously who's going to be looking at the inside of my pocket to say oh she's left washi tape there <laughs> well I'm hoping the recipient of this doesn't um, so this is it was made yesterday which was good Friday um, and I will be sending this out on Tuesday so it will be a late Easter happy mail <laughs> so I can snip that one away because that is um, where I reverse stitched and you can see I'm tucking in the edges of the zip here and uh, making sure that that works so now it's time for me to get that double sided tape and run along the gusset edges so I'm running along the just the the furthest edge 
of the gusset and just popping the double sided tape on that um, half inch gap and then I position it around the right way um, what I tend to do is I tend to stick the back uh, layer down onto the side layers so that it, it, it um, what's the words so it looks neat and tidy so you can see there that I've just stuck that down um, so that it holds it together so it's just one unified gusset edge so just going to position that. I've done my usual trick of just pulling out the double sided tape just a little bit. Uh, positioning where I want it and then pulling out the tape. And ta-da! We now have the uh, pocket on the front and we have a working zip. So that is the basis of your flipbook. So you could finish the video here if you want to, and you can finish it however you want to finish it if you were um, popping this pocket somewhere else. So I'm going to pop a pocket on the inside that hides that stitch, um, and then I am going to add the closure. So I think first I'll add the closure. Let's see. Yes. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a, um, I guess what you would call is like a bracket. Uh, it would be a metal bracket in in terms of, um, uh, in terms of other projects. But because we are working with paper, we're making a uh, paper bracket, um, and so that's going to be where the blue uh, closure actually slides through. Um, so. It's another thing that I wanted to stitch, so I'm just quickly um, running my sewing machine around this tiny, tiny piece of paper. Um, so it's very, very small. Um, I just eyeballed it. I didn't have any measurements for you for this one. It's everyone each to their own um, device, I guess. And so just pulling that out and then I um, finish off the... Uh, threads by actually pulling them through to the other side um, you can see here that where it's gone around the corner it has rounded that edge which didn't look too bad so move that out the way and then i will get rid of those threads by pulling them through um, i don't know why i didn't add this section out because you get the joy of me pulling through the threads and tying them off <laughs> something I should have probably edited out because it's off on the edge of the, the screen. Um, but anyway, you get to see the whole process. <laughs> I obviously skipped past this, past this part in the editing. Um, so I'm hoping you've all had a wonderful Easter weekend or having a wonderful Easter weekend because I'm hoping that this video will go up this afternoon. Uh, so getting my machine out again so that I can go around the edge of the pocket that I'm going to run on the inside of the um, front page. So the uh, pocket itself is going to go vertically. I'm just going to go around the corners again nicely and I'm only doing the three edges that would have been on the inside of the actual booklet that would have been sewn. Uh, I felt that if I put this pocket in and left it without any stitching it would have um, sort of ruined the aesthetic of, of actually having that sewn around booklet. So taking that out, so I think that's the last time I used the sewing machine for you guys. Um, I'm hoping you guys have got a sewing machine and you can actually um, give this project a go. So just going to stick this down with double sided tape. Now the double sided tape I have used here is very thin. Um, and I do end up swapping out the double sided tape because when I go to put something in the pocket um, the thin double sided tape doesn't um, hold so I do actually go in with a thicker double tape um, because I think it's uh, stitched and I'm putting on to more stitching 
uh, I don't think it was holding uh, very well as that thin double-sided tape. So just getting rid of the washi, which is where I plan to have my um, have my uh, closure on the back. Now I could have sewn this on to the back page, but I don't think it was necessary. Um, so I do place it and then I realise it's in the wrong spot when I turn it over. So I do end up picking it up to um, replace it, but it's just just a slow pick up. <laughs> and um, there is a little tiny tear there on the back, but um, I do end up covering up that tear, so that's good. And then this is our little tiny bracket that we're going to pop on. Um, our paper bracket <laughs> so um, I have seen people use brads for their little brackets but all I did was use some gems um, just some pink gems that sort of matched I played with some gems and saw which one was the best one um, I really liked these because they sparkled just pressing them down and then popping that on I use my pencil to work out where I need the glue and the one thing I do use on this because I think wet glue and double sided tape wouldn't be strong enough um, so I do bring in my hot glue gun to uh, stick this bracket down because you want it to be very firmly down in order for the closure to be able to, to go in so I'm just sticking my bracket down and then we've got our closure so let's open it up you see the pocket on the left and the fact that it's stitched all the way around it mar marries up with the stitching so now is time for me to decorate and put the goodies in if you want to leave this video here please give it a like a comment and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already um, and for those that are staying you're more than welcome to stay and see how this mail uh, finishes uh, with the decoration. So just using some of the matching die cuts for the range. Uh, the range is an Echo Park range, bear with me two seconds. Uh, I have a feeling... Yep, so it's called My Favourite Easter. Sorry, I was just walking across my craft room there to, to see. So My Favourite Easter from Echo Park Paper. And just using just a couple of pieces to finish it off. I don't think this mail needs much in the way of decoration because um, it is so detailed itself with the zip and the stitching. Um, so really, really happy with how this one turned out. And uh, you will see the um, goodies that I put inside. Like I said, I made this yesterday and it's currently in the box with the address on um, for the person it's going to. I won't tell you who it's for because um, they might be watching this video. <laughs> and I don't want to spoil the surprise. <laughs> so popping that into the zip. And then the eggs there little eggs and then we've got some gem stickers and I then bring in some cut aparts from the paper range so rearranging that so it's got the blue next to the blue <laughs> obviously I'm a bit anal um, so we have cut aparts here from the uh, my favorite Easter range and I'm just going to slide those into that bottom pocket and then um, I do write a letter on some bunny paper, like bunny writing paper, and I do pop that up behind those cutter parts at the top. So we have a washi tape that I couldn't fit in. We've got some ribbon, um, and it's Easter ribbon from um, Bed Bath and Table. And I thought that the spools probably needed a touch of decoration here. So I am just finishing them off with some stickers from the range. So I'm hoping you like this video, this tutorial of how I make my zip pockets um, in my mail. Um, very simple, just a case of using washi tape to stick the zip down. 
So let me know what you think. Um, leave me a comment. Happy Easter to you all. Lots and lots of crafty love from me. And I will see you in my next one. Take care, everyone. Bye.